Hi, my name is Reese Bergen, and I'm professor of saxophone at Lone Star College Montgomery, and I also teach private lessons in the woodlands. I made this short video to share with you some basic concepts for reed break-in and storage. So, let's get to it. Here's what I mean when I say breaking in a reed. Think about it like a shoe. When you get a new pair of shoes, they feel pretty good. They're fun to play in, but they're also just a little bit stiff. Well, think about it. After a couple weeks of running around and walking around in your shoes, they start to feel really good. They loosen up just a little bit. That's when your shoe is broken in. Uh, reeds are, behave kind of the same way, except it's a little bit more delicate because reeds are what are called organic, organic material. material. And organic material basically means that it's alive. So the reed is made from cane, which is a type of wood. So not only do reeds need to break in kind of like a shoe, but if they break in too fast, they become tired. And if they're not rotated, then they stay tired. If you want your reeds to give you your best tone quality in response, then you're gonna need to be sure that you break them in properly and that you store them and rotate them. And we're gonna go through what that means right now. The basic concept behind breaking in a reed is to take your time. So let's play pretend it's day one, you've just opened that new reed and you've got your saxophone assembled. Here's what you're gonna do with that brand new reed that you just unwrapped, you wet it in your mouth and you put it on your mouthpiece. Let's just play the Remington exercise. and so on and so forth, and you would finish out the exercise. All right, so that was day one. We played the Remington exercise. Time to put the reed up. All right, and now it's day two. So you've got your brand new reed on. You just opened it yesterday. Now you've wet it in your mouth and you've put it on the saxophone. So let's play through the Remington again. And so on and so forth and you finish your Remington exercise. But we're on day two so now we're going to add something new into it. We're going to continue to break in that reed very gently. So I'm going to play my concert B flat major scale and my concert C major scale. And the reason I'm choosing these is because they're one octave and they're not too high and they're not too low. So again just being very gentle. So I'm going to play through those scales now. <laughs> day two. Now you may be thinking, Mr. Bergen, I've barely played this read. What's the point? Well, the point is if you play it too much, it'll get tired. So we're going to stop there for day two. All right, and it's day three. So this is the third day that we've been working on breaking in this read. So I just wet it. I got my saxophone fully assembled. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did for day one and day two. I'm going to play through my Remington. I'm going to play through my concert B-flat and my concert C scales. All right, and now because it's day three, I'm going to add one more thing. I'll just play my two octave chromatic scale from low D to high D. So now I'm adding in some low notes and some high notes so that I can continue to break in that reed, but just a little bit at a time. So here's that two octave chromatic scale. All right, by this point, your reed should be feeling pretty broken in. Um, if not, then, you know, put it back in to, the, uh, to wherever you're storing your reeds. Try again on day four. Add in something else. Maybe you do your Remington, your two major scales, your chromatic scale, and then you just go ahead and play some band music. Um, and then just go and keep keep doing it bit by bit, a little bit longer every day, a little bit, you know, a little bit louder perhaps as well, just to kind of get that reed to break in gently. All right, so we talked about how to break in reeds. Let's talk about how to store them. Here's how I store my reeds. So glorious. Okay, 
Here's why you don't need something like this, okay? I'm a professional musician. I have 10 alto reeds and five tenor reeds that I rotate through, and I play anywhere from one to three hours every day. I need that many reeds to rotate through so my reeds don't get tired and quit on me. Now you're probably practicing anywhere from, oh, 15 minutes or so to maybe 30 minutes a day, 45 on some extra special days. So for you, something like this would be great. This is a reed guard. Uh, I actually just picked it up today, just about nine bucks, and it's very functional. There are many different kinds of reed guards that are like this that hold four reeds. The thing I like about this reed case by Daddario, it's kind of hard to see, but they are numbered. One, two, three, and four. So you can easily keep track of which reed you've played that day. So that you're going to rotate through those reeds. One, two, three, four. That way you're not playing on the same reed all the time. Because that's when your reed is going to, you know, it's just going to quit on you a lot sooner than it would otherwise. You might be wondering, Mr. Bergen, how do I know if my reed has quit on me? One sign that your reed might have quit on you is maybe you sound like this. Right? Wrong. That's just a bad embouchure. You'll know when a reed has quit on you if, uh, you know, if it's not playing the way it normally does. So, you know, you've gone through your rotation many times. You know what reed number three sounds like and what it feels like to play. For some reason today, it just doesn't feel like itself. It's not playing the way it normally does. Low notes are harder to play. Uh, your tone is really fuzzy. Maybe, maybe the reed just feels harder to blow on. That's not a coincidence. You know, if you've broken in your reed properly and you've rotated it and that reed's not playing very good today, skip it. And then what you're gonna do is try it again tomorrow. And tomorrow, if it's still not playing, then it's probably time to trash it. So you'll also know that your reed is probably no good if it looks like this. Or this, or this, or this, or this. If your reed looks like that, throw it in the trash. Don't save it, just get a new one. And if you don't have a new one, time to go get another box. Oh. That was just a very quick introduction to uh, how to break in reeds. There are more complicated ways to do it, but the basic thing to remember when you're breaking in reeds is that you want to ease your way into it. Don't play 30 minutes straight on a reed fresh out of the package because that reed needs time to break in. And be sure that when you store it, that you're putting it in a case where it's protected, either in the sleeve that it came in or in your own personal reed case. If you take care of your reeds, they will last longer and give you a better sound. And ultimately, you'll have a very enjoyable experience playing your instrument.